Coming to you live from the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences, our seventh stop on our Ag Ventures tour across the nation with our show, Come, Come Be Ag Ventures with Daniel and Amy. So, Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences has been founded since 1985. This used to be a family farm, and so they sold it, but they were promised for agriculture-wise. So I had the chance to talk with some of the students and I learned about the pathways. They get to choose a different pathway for their junior and senior year to focus on a field in agriculture. The pathways range from agricultural mechanics and technology, agricultural finance and economics, horticulture and landscape design, food science, animal science, and biotechnology. Today we're going to hear from some of those students. Are we going to bring them up today? Sounds great. Let's get started. All right. Up first, we have Adam Villarreal from the Agricultural Careers and Leadership. Welcome, Adam. You. you can take a seat. So, Adam, tell me, how did you come to the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So, I was first exposed to this school in the fourth grade, and I realized that this school provides opportunities that no other school in the Chicago area does, and I feel like that's a very important skill that you're going to need later on in uh, the future. Sounds great. So I know you've only been here for a few weeks, but did you know anything about agriculture beforehand or did you come in kind of not knowing a lot? Um, I had a kind of a little like brief, you know, description of it. Uh, I wasn't too sure, but like again, it was kind of so-so. So, uh, I know you've only been here again for only a few, few weeks, but if you had to pick, which pathway would you go into? If I had to pick a pathway, I would maybe say horticulture because I'm into uh, plant science. So have you given any thought to what you want to do after high school? Uh, I probably want to pursue, uh, end up getting my PhD and uh, majoring in botany. Sounds great. So I know you have a presentation for us with your other colleagues, so let's head over there and get to learn more. Definitely. So who do we have with us today? Hi, my name is Andrea Beltran. Hi, nice, Hi, to, nice meet to meet you. I'm Layla Washington. Nice to meet you. So our demonstration is we're taking a generic goal and turning it into a SMART goal by the SMART goal process. So a SMART goal is an acronym for a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and trackable goal. So to make the goal specific, we would just have, uh, the generic goal would be, I want to achieve a high GPA by the end of the year. So to make it more specific, you would say that you want to achieve a 5.0 GPA. To make it measurable, you would say that one wants to achieve it, say, the end of your freshman year. <coughs> to make it achievable, one would say that they want to study, stay on top of their grades, and turn in like in-class assignments, homework, etc. And to make this more realistic, it, one, the student would have to be enrolled in honors classes and try to achieve the highest grades possible for those classes. And finally, to make it more time-focused, one, yeah, time-based and trackable, one would have to be able to check their progress online, the student portal, to see how their GPA and their grades are doing. So Daniel, do you have like a, a generic goal that we could turn into a SMART goal for you? Yeah, so I know a lot of students right now are applying to college, so why don't we make a generic goal applying to 10 schools? Okay, so to make that more specific, you would say you'd want to list the type of schools that you'd want to apply to, which, I don't know, it could be whatever you're interested, honestly. Um, to make it more measurable, you would say like three, four months before graduation, junior year, start applying. To make it achievable, you would have to stay on top of your class, like on top of your grades, make sure like you turn your assignments, especially if you're in an honors class or an AP class. To make it more realistic, one would be have, to be, have to be enrolled in honors classes, AP, et cetera. And to make it trackable would be kind of the same thing as the original goal that we had, to be able to check your grades online. Sounds great. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much for showing us the SMART goals. And up next is Michael Lehman in computer science. Hi, welcome to the show. So the first question is, why did you come to Ag? So basically, I was kind of exposed to it by my parents because my mom ended up going to an agricultural school. She went to Lincoln Way West. So 
since about sixth, seventh, eighth grade, around there, every summer I'd come over here and look at the school, and I just thought it was a very unique school, being the only, be, being the only farm in Chicago. And since you're only a sophomore, what are some pathways that you're considering? Right now, I'm thinking either horticulture or ag finance. And why? Mostly because when we had, when we had our SAE over summer, freshman year, I did it with Miss Key, Miss Key for horticulture, and I just really like the base of it and how it's crazy how you could just make plants in the back of your school. Great. So also, what's your favorite moment at Ag? My favorite moment was probably when we went to the state convention last year, mainly because we were able to go to Springfield, Illinois, and speak with many different schools about agriculture and I got to meet many high up people in the FFA with all the state officers. It was just a very good time. All right, so you have a demonstration for us today? Yes. All right, let's go check it out. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Michael Lopitz. All right, and what are you demonstrating for us today? Um, I'm demonstrating basic parts of a computer. All right, and also, how does a computer relate to agriculture? A computer relates to agriculture because you can use a computer for diagnostics on machines, for help on animals trying to identify illnesses and sicknesses, and it can help count your crop increase or reduction based on certain variables. Also, also any ag teacher would need to keep data logs, so that also helps with the computer too. All right, let's get it started. Well, to start, here's a motherboard. The motherboard is one of the most important parts of a computer. The CPU here is the brain of the computer. And these are the motherboard connectors. They'll connect your motherboard to your hard drive and such. As we can see here, we have RAM sticks, three RAM sticks that are one gigabyte each, along with a graphics card. Graphics cards are used to display images. All right. uh, the graphics card would fit in on the back over here. The RAM would go into the RAM would go into these three black slots, and they'd hold it. Um, computers. Hey, are very important in agriculture. They've helped for the past 50 years in agriculture and have made many advances even into studying GMOs. All right, thank you so much for this demonstration. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Patricia Tishy from the FFA. Welcome. Welcome, Patricia. So tell me, how did you get involved in the FFA? Um, before I became a, a freshman here, we hold a program called Freshman Connection here at the school. Um, we come for two weeks before the school year actually starts, and we have senior leaders. The senior leaders are um, the chapter officers here at the school, and we got exposed right away to um, what the FFA is, how it's all about, and um, being a freshman, you know, looking at all the clubs that I could possibly go into that really sparked my interest. Um, so I know you've only been on FFA for two years now. And I know um, when I met with you this morning, you told me that you were the chapter president. So tell me a little bit about like your role as chapter president. Okay. Um, yes, this year I did become chapter president. Um, it's a really big year, obviously senior year. Um, we work with all the officers throughout the school. Um, we do um, more programs than I could ever think of. This summer we had a backyard harvest. Um, it focused on farm to table food. Um, we had alumni from the school come in and cook the meals in our food science lab um, to show us that you know, an agriculture student became a chef and then came in and applied those skills that they learned. So it was really interesting. 
So I know you're a senior, so do you have any thoughts for college and beyond? Um, that is the big question of the year. Um, I've been looking at U of I, College of Aces, since my freshman year. Um, they are big part, they're a big part of our school. I've been there numerous times. Um, I've been also been looking at Purdue, Michigan State. Um, those are real big schools that I've been looking at. Not too far, but far enough away that I can do my own thing. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you. All right. Up next, we have Kai Ve Dean in animal science. Hi. Welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> All right. First question. For animal science, why did you choose this pathway? I've always loved animals, and since I was like four, I've been wanting to figure out new and humane ways to care for animals and to fix any illnesses that they have, and that would not only benefit them, but also benefit us cost-wise. So are you thinking of majoring in animal science or anything in particular? Yes, it's marine biology and re animal rehabilitation. Oh, great. So what was your favorite moment at ag or animal science? Well, just yesterday, we had our cow get her hoof trimmed. Um, she's a fish related cow, so basically the hoof trimmer came in with a portable squeeze machine or squeeze chute, and she was put in, and she got comfortable, and then she had her hoofs propped up on, each hoof propped up on his own um, stand, and he scraped everything out, that like all the manure and everything, clipped her hooves, and then put a eye, um, iodine and alcohol mix on to prevent any bacteria. So then I also heard when your pig was in labor, you had a live stream. Can you talk about that? Yes, so we had a live stream to uh, monitor the pig 24-7, and we had different students take different shifts um, to watch the pig, and if we, we were um, taught on the behaviors to look for in case she goes into labor. And each student had her shift, and if we would see anything, we would contact our teacher. And I remember it was like um, late at night that she started having her first um, piglet. And some students actually, along with our teacher, came in to help give birth to her. All right, so do you have a demonstration for us today? Yes, right over here. All right. All right, hi, what's your guys' names? Oh, I'm Jake. I'm Lisa Lascola, and we're seniors in the Animal Science Career Pathway. Do you want to come on Okay, so as you can see here, we have one of our chickens, or one of our hens from the barn, I should say. This is Loretta. And so basically today we're going to be showing you how an egg starts out from a hen's ovaries and how it gets to your breakfast plate in the morning. So to start off, there's two main parts of the reproductive system of a hen, the ovary and the oviduct. And so initially the egg begins in the ovary when the sigma releases the yolk into the system. And so then it travels through the oviduct and it goes into the infidibulum. So here in the infidibulum, if fertilization were to happen, it would happen during this stage. And so then the yolk travels through the magnum. And here in the magnum is when the egg white or the albumin would form. So then it heads to the isthmus. Now within the isthmus, uh, okay. So within the isthmus, it, uh, it gains another layer and it doesn't have its egg shape yet. It actually is, looks very pruney. Um, then it heads to something called the uh, shell, shell gland. Now with the shell gland, it becomes very hard and it gains a calcium-like substance and it hardens and it actually gets its egg shape. Now with that egg shape, bacteria can't get in, but it, they're small holes, that way the embryo inside the egg can breathe. Then it heads to the cochlea, and uh, then it is turned around and it is, it is pushed out and then it is uh, laid, an egg is laid that way. So for part of our demonstration, we thought we would kind of show you guys how we collect the eggs here on our farm. So to start off, we have right here would be our nesting box. And so what we would do is we would take a basket like this, and basically we would collect the eggs every day, which is one of our uh, chores we do in the pathway. So once we collect the eggs, we would go by the sink area and we would wash them off. And so then eventually what we would do, these are actually the eggs that we collected from our tents in the barn. And so what we do is we actually sell them here at our school to the local community. Okay, you want me to? Okay. 
So anyways, part of uh, animal science is we study the biological processes of animals. So what we would do is we would take this as a candling device, and it allows you to look at the inside of the egg to see the air pocket and that. And so, Jacob, would you like to turn that on for us? Of course. And so I know it's probably hard for you guys to see because of the lights and everything, but here, if you were to come up close, you could see the air pockets and the cell, uh, shell membranes in that. And so that's basically our demonstration. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Animal Science. Up next, we have Miranda Perez from Biotechnology. Welcome, Miranda. So, Miranda, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? Living around the living in the neighborhood, we would I would see. It's upside down. <laughs> living in the neighborhood. <laughs> I would see, I would go past the school all the time and I would see the farm and I'd notice the horses out on the farm and I always liked horses as a kid and I didn't really know what it, what the school had to, had to give to me until I actually came and when I was in grammar school for a high school visit for freshman investigation. So I know that the biotechnology pathway is new, so tell me why you ended up choosing that as your pathway. I chose biotechnology as my pathway because it was new and I wanted to, it was new as of last year and I wanted to try something new. I first was going to choose horticulture, but then as I looked more into biotechnology, it seemed like something I wanted to go into. So I know you're a senior, so the big question this year is what are you thinking about for college and beyond? For college, I would like to go into nursing and this really, the, my pathway really helps because it, t it learns a lot of biology, which is what you need to become a nurse. And we also learn about, um, animal biotechnology. Um, so one last question. If you had to pick out of all the memories, what would be your favorite memory from Chaz? One of my favorite memories actually has to do in my pathway. We got a $25,000 grant from uh, Case New Holland and I got to, take, got to take part of that. And since our, our pathway is new, it was a really big success. So I was in the farm stand earlier today, and I know you guys make the soy candles, so can you talk about the process that goes into that? Yeah, we, we have been donated soy wax, and for our pathway, what we do is we make soy candles, and we have a bunch of different scents. We sell them at the farm stand, we sell, sold them at the Flower and Garden Show, and they're a really big hit. Okay, sounds great. So I know you have a demonstration, so let's head over there. Okay. How are you guys? Hello, how are you guys doing today? Um, we will be performing gel electrophoresis for you guys today. And that's basically where you can get your designated trait that you're looking for within the sieve. So these are our samples right here. And we use micro pipettes, which um, takes micro liters, and we use that to pipette into the gel. And so we take this gel and we run electricity through it. And as you can see, you can see that the, that the DNA moves from negative to positive. And you have to make sure, be sure not to poke holes through the gel or else the DNA can leak through. And so as it runs from negative to positive, since the DNA has a negative charge, the DNA runs from the negative to the positive side. And so as we turn this on, it's at 100 volts. It takes a while for the for you to start seeing the bands and what the band what the purpose of this is is to identify two different DNA strands or you can um, identify different genes in the DNA strand. Well, thank you so much. This is really helpful. It was nice to meet you guys, and I'm glad I got to take part in the, co in the demonstration. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Next, we have Laura Mora in Agricultural Mechanics and Technology. Hi. All right, so first for agricultural, mechanical, and technology, so you're a senior. Yes. So first, are you choosing 
MechTech for your major? Um, yes, I'm looking to pursue mechanical engineering in college. So how did you want to pursue this? Um, I actually have several relatives who have gone into engineering and I've always been interested in that um, from a very young age and I was able to explore that career path here at the school. So. And then how did you end up at Ag? Um, that's actually a funny story. So I don't live anywhere near the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. I live by Sox Park. Um, and the only reason I knew about the school is because I had a friend and her older sister attended this school. She graduated about three years before I came here. So I um, knew of the school because of her, but I, the only reason I ended up coming here was because of the investigation day that they held here um, a couple um, months before my uh, freshman year. So I was able to learn more about it and understand that I, this is something that I wanted to do. So do you regret coming two hours to come to Egg? Uh, no, not at all. Um, the experiences that I've had here, are I, they can't compare to anything else that I would have had at a local high school. So I'm very happy that I'm here. So if you weren't at Egg right now, which school would you be attending? Um, I'd probably be at a private school in my area. But I don't. again, I don't think it compares to what I'm learning here at Chicago Egg. So then I heard about the Flower and Garden Show. Can you talk about that? Uh, yes, so the Flower and Garden Show is something that we uh, host every single year. Um, the MacTech pathway goes alongside the horticulture pathway, and we create a display that is uh, centered in uh, downtown at Navy Pier. Um, we create something new every year. Um, this last March, we actually put together a 12-foot tall Ferris wheel that was fully functioning. Um, it was a very great experience. So I can't believe that you guys are the only high schoolers. So can you talk about that, of how you're the only high schoolers? Uh, yes. So it's a very big responsibility that we have, given that we are so young. And um, compared to everybody else, we are uh, rather inexperienced. But I think that with this school and what we've learned, um, it's, a very, it's a very fun project that we get to work on. And I think that it um, has helped me um, learn more about how to put together different projects like that. So since you're a senior, what has been your favorite moment at Egg? Um, my favorite moment at Ag um, was a span of a couple months. So our sophomore year, we get to go through rotation in each pathway to figure out which one we like best. And I really enjoyed that because even though I chose Bangkok as my main pathway, I still had an interest for all six of them. So I liked that I was able to learn a little, about, a little bit about each one. All right. And you have a demonstration for us today? Uh, yes. All right. Let's go down and get it. Hi. What's your names? I'm Max Alcoffer. Hi, I'm Rob Bro. And then what year are you guys in? I'm a junior and senior in a mechanical technology pathway. And then what are you guys doing for us today? Uh, we're making, making uh, cutouts of a dove using the scroll saw. All right, let's see. So this machine is called a scroll saw, and this can be used for various um, various ways. So um, its its most important use is to make obscure cuts in different shapes. Um, we use this to make um, odd curves in any kind of personal project. So here we have a cutout of a dove. Obviously, in the wings, it's going to be uh, lots of circles and different uh, shapes. So that's what we primarily use this tool for. For uh, time purposes. Uh we just made these already, and uh, this is what the final product would look like. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ag Mechanics. Up next, we have Barbara Gochi from Food Science. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So Barbara, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So my brother actually went here before me, so he kind of introduced me to the school. Um, but it, what really caught my eye, my attention, was the different pathways. And definitely horticulture was a big one that I wanted. Um, but yeah, that's how I kind of got here. <laughs> so I know you're in food science, so how did you end up in food science since you just mentioned you wanted to go into horticulture? So food science was not my first choice or my second, but it was in fact my third. Um, I think my interviewer might have saw my potential for the pathway, and I am so thankful that he did. 
I enjoy all the different opportunities that come from it, and I, I love being in the lab, and I love my, my students and my teacher, and it's all great. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis in food science. Okay, so for the pathways, the juniors and seniors both have two periods of their day where they are in that pathway. So for food science, one, one part will be in the classroom taking notes on microorganisms and how to keep them from food. Um, maybe nutrition will go over. We each had to make our own nutrition labels last year for a product of our own. So it's basically kind of what we do. And then the next period we will be working in the lab and maybe making that product that I just mentioned or we'll be making things for our farm stand. Um, so just to wrap it up, what are you thinking about for college and beyond? Okay, so I want to go into nursing. I want to be a registered nurse. Um, and I'm thinking of St. Xavier, but I'm also looking at University of Wisconsin-Madison or University of Michigan. Okay, thank you. So I know you have a demonstration, so let's head over there and meet the rest All of right. them. Who do we have with us today? Uh, I'm Khalil Parsons. I'm a senior. And I'm Gianna Ferguson, a junior. All right, and today we're going to show you how we can and process our homemade salsa. So the tomatoes used in our salsa is actually grown on our farm here at Chicago Egg. Okay, so uh, here we have a spread of our materials that we use to make our salsa. And uh, first, we have a scale that we use to weigh out our ingredients and grams for our salsa. Then we have a bowl of pre-cooled salsa that uh, we got from our steam kettle that we can and process in there, or we uh, make and process. Then we have a funnel, uh, two measuring cups, so we make sure we know how much salsa is going into our sterilized mason jars that we sterilize at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours. And a, bo a pot of boiling water that we use to um, boil the lid shut on our mason jars. All right, so uh, we can get started. But before we start, Danny, for your safety and for the food safety, we have a lab coat and hairnet for you. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> All right. Okay, to get started, we're going to take our salsa and pour it into two measuring cups just to get an estimate of how much we're putting in our mason jars. So you want to be sure to pour it slowly and carefully because this can get very messy. Just a little bit neat so we can make sure we uh, even the sugar up. And then after that, after that, you're going to want to put your funnel on your mason jar to make sure there's no spillage or leakage from where you're actually trying to put our salsa. Because we want to make sure the salsa doesn't go anywhere but the mason jar. So we're going to pour it very carefully. Uh, Danny, would you like to give it a try? Sure, why not? All right. Please be very careful. <laughs> I wouldn't want to waste it. Yeah, and you're going to want to make sure you leave about, you're going to want to make sure you leave about a fourth inch of headspace at the top as to prevent microbial growth in the mason jar and in the salsa. All right. So maybe uh, you can a little, add a little bit, bit, more. bit more. Yeah. All right, that's good. So now we're going to place our lid on the top of our salsa, like so. And when you're screwing on, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of space to screw on, because when you're boiling the water, if it's too tight, it can actually explode. But when you leave a little bit of space to screw on, it'll uh, seal, it'll make sure the jar is completely sealed. So now we're going to take our clamps and place it into our boiling water for 15 minutes. And this is so we can seal the lid, um, process it, and overall ensure shelf stability for our salsa. All right, so after about 15 minutes of boiling in the uh, boiling water and cooling for several hours, we take out uh, the salsa, and this is what our finished product will look like. So after we take out our salsa, what we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure the lid is completely concave. So that's how we know it's sealed, and we also do a flip test to make sure there's no spillages or leaks in the salsa and we're ready to go and the product is now shelf stable and ready to be sold. And actually uh, everybody loves our salsa. 
So of course, you have to try some. We have some chips ready for you, Danny. Sounds great, I can't wait. <laughs> I didn't get lunch. I'm gonna get some too, actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, thanks, Danny. Thank you. <laughs> hey guys, so I heard you did a great job, so can I try one too? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that was really good. So um, our farm stand is open from Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you guys should get some. Thank you. Um, so up next, we have Darnell Kennerson in horticulture. <laughs> Hi, Darnell. How are you? I'm good, and yourself? All right. So for horticulture, why did you choose it? Well, first of all, I love plants. Um, just the fact that it's a class for it, like I really wanted to do it. And my mom talked about it and I had no clue the school was here. So, you know, if there's an opportunity, I wanted to take it. How did you get into egg? Well, um, like I said, I do like plants. And um, just to see the farm and the field, you know, how big it was. And just to know that students, you know, we take care of it and I wanted to be a part of it. All right, and then also, what do you think makes a big difference by going to this school rather than another school? Well, I would say kids from King can't really say that uh, they have a farm stand, <laughs> you know. So uh, just being here, I can help the people in my community, you know, help them make good choices, you know, what's GMOs, what's not. You know, my knowledge is their knowledge, and together we can make the right decisions. That was deep. <laughs> so how do you think uh, you can help others by coming to this school? Um, just, you know, getting more involved, you know, putting things out there, you know, social media, you know, hey, come out, come join, or come help out, you know, so I guess that's what I would do. So, Laura discussed how you are also involved with the Flower and Garden Show. Yes. So, what did you do in there? Well, um, for the simple fact that it's one of the most stressful times being here at Chaz, um, we get a chance to go to Navy Pier and help out with the Flower and Garden Show, which is um, usually just Hort and uh, uh, Ag Mechtech. And I had a chance to, you know, just be able to put a bunch of different flowers up and design them certain ways and being there uh, just for a very long time. And I think the Flower and Garden Show, like once it's done, you get a chance to just see and, you know, just admire your work. So then also, what was your favorite moment at Chess? I want to say my favorite moment at Chaz is when I gave my first um, tour towards the end of my junior year and being able to um, explain the different types of flowers that were, you know, I can honestly say if I can go back to myself three years ago, I wouldn't be able to really get myself to understand. I wouldn't know this, you know. So then I heard you're a senior. So what are you going to do with horticulture going on to college? Well, I'm kind of debating on botany and art. Um, but, you know, I, I really think I want to get into botany because, you know, like I said before, it's a big opportunity and I don't want to, you know, kick to the side. All right. So you have a demonstration? Yes. Can you show it to us? Yes, we can. All right. All right. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Lorraine Claros and I'm a senior in the horticulture and landscape design pathway. All right, so what are you doing for us today? Well, today I'm making a centerpiece for a table that you could use in Thanksgiving around the holiday times, and it's just something simple and easy that you could put together in no time. Thank you. All right. So what I have here are just a few standard flowers. Can you hold this for a second? And when you want to cut the flowers, you want to cut them at an angle. That way more water can get into them. And for the base, I'm using what's called an oasis. And basically, you submerge it in water, and it soaks it all up. And so once you stick the flowers in, they'll stay in place. And Darnell can actually tell you some of the flowers that I use. Yes. So I'm going to start here. We have smoke bush plants. Um, here, sunflower. I'll put this down. 
standard roses, hydrangeas, um, dahlias, and football mums, like she said, and button mums. So what are your favorite flowers out of these? Um, I want to say the football mum because of going over them, it was the easiest flower to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our class, we did plant identification, so we learned over 150 plants and had to memorize them. Wow. And yeah, my favorite are the standard roses because they come in a variety of colors and when they blossom, they're really nice. All right. So I'm not done with this one, but the finishing product is a beautiful centerpiece in a cornucopia. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Horticulture. Up next, we have Josh Grimes from the Agricultural Finance and Economics Pathway. Welcome, Josh. So, Josh, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So, the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences is one of my neighborhood schools that I have looked at, and my parents really wanted me to go look at the school just because of all the opportunities it does give to the students, and it's just so unique and different than a normal high school around here. So when I came to come look at it, I was really interested in all the different pathways and I could just see myself walking around the hallways. So I know you're in the agricultural finance and economics pathway, so tell me why you picked that pathway. So when I decided on picking ag finance, I picked it just because I do want to go into a marketing background when I do graduate. So I felt that why not better try out a class that could possibly be my, be my future. So I really wanted to get a feel for it. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis in ag finance? So just like all the other pathways, we do have a two-hour period where for the first part of the period we are on computers and we do research on different, like for last year for instance, we did stock research and we were um, looking at stocks and investments and how just to be smart with your money, with your personal finances. Um, so what would you say is your favorite memory from Chaz? So... My personal favorite memory has to be when we were at the Flower Garden Show. Along with our display that we do host, we also have a place in our marketplace that um, food science and finance c c combined, and we sell everything that is made at our store and right. our school. So today I was here at the farm stand, so I know you have a demonstration, so why don't we head down there and learn more about that? Sounds great. Hi, who do we have with us today? I'm Carl Ferguson, senior year. Nice to year. meet you. Hi, I'm Ryan Reed. Nice to meet you. And I'm here to elaborate more on what Josh was saying. Um, here in uh, Ag Finance Pathway, we do a lot from business management to, uh, to accounting. And um, how we practice these skills, we uh, track sales at events such as the Farm Stand, Red Tractor Fair, and the Chicago Flower and Garden Show. And how we practice that, we use a spreadsheet as you see here, and my colleague Ryan Reed is going to demonstrate that for you. This is the spreadsheet we use on a day-to-day -day basis in our farm stand. It contains the products that we sell. It also keeps track of the amount of customers we have daily. The crops that we have on here range from the pumpkins we harvest here all the way to the honey that we get from the bees in the back of the school. So can you guys tell me what your favorite product here is at the farm stand? Uh, my favorite is the zucchini bread that our food science pathway makes. Uh, I'll say the honey. And I would have to say our sweet corn that's grown. So one final question. I know I talked with Josh about what he wanted to do with college and beyond. So Ryan and Carl, can you tell me a little bit about what you want to do after high school? Uh, I hope to attend a four-year university and major in agribusiness and hopefully one day own my own t-shirt line. Um, I would have to say nearly the same. I'd like to go to a four-year four -year university, but I would like to find a different major and not start my own business. <laughs> Sounds great. So thank you for being here today, and I look forward to buying some salsa and zucchini bread later today. Thank you Open for Thursdays, us. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And me and Danny are going to go up and talk about it. So, wow, what an impressive group of students. I know, I can't believe it. 
I was talking to the teachers, and they said the juniors and seniors have job shadows. So they get, based on their pathway, they go to different jobs and get to experience their day-to-day life. Yeah, I was talking with some of the students earlier today, and they were telling us about all the different research opportunities they were given, and even have summer internships, from ranging from going to Japan on a foreign exchange, to even South Korea, and then around the world, and even around the nation, which is really impressive, since some of them aren't even old enough to drive. (laughs) I wish I went to this high school. I definitely know that if I went to this high school, I'd come out with some really good skills for my future. Me too. I think this was agtacular. I'd have to agree. Back to you, Susan.